If you have a Samsung French door refrigerator and it is freezing up on you and causing all kinds of issues, um, likely you've been trying to fix it for a while. I know I have, this is about six years old, uh, but I think I have a permanent solution for you. It took me about two months of testing before I felt confident in making this video uh, to show you how we perform the repair. So now it's been two months and two weeks without any problems. And uh, I think it's time to show you what I did. So when your refrigerator is acting up, one of the first symptoms you'll get early on is when you open up the door, it starts making a ting, 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 ting sound. And that's the fan getting encroached on by ice because the uh, the coil is freezing up on you. And counterintuitively, when the coil freezes up, it actually makes the refrigerator not able to keep itself cold. So the first thing you wanna do on a Samsung freezer refrigerator combo is if you hold down these two buttons, the freezer and the fridge, for about eight seconds, it'll go into a diagnostic mode. Now, why Samsung, in their infinite wisdom, didn't give you a diagnostic code without pressing these buttons, I don't know, uh, but you have to force it to give a diagnostic code. So even though there's something wrong with it, it won't tell you until you ask. So the screen will go blank. And at this point, if there was a code, you'll get some letters here. And what you would do is you would take your handy dandy factory service manual. Uh, you can either get this in Korean, if your Korean's very good, um, or you can get a copy from eManuals online or a really poorly translated version from a less reputable place, which is what I got. So I had to do a little bit of figuring out uh, what they meant to say. But long story short, if you have some errors, you just go to page 60 here and it'll show you what all the different error codes mean. Now, the fact that we've got a blank screen here, that's a good sign. That means that there's no error codes detected. And the three most popular error codes you will get is a failure of the defrost circuit, a failure of the condensing fan, circulation fan, they call it the pantry fan, and that's because it's locked up and the computer can tell that it's not spinning. So if you're getting those errors, a defrost failure, a failure of the circulation fan or another, then you know you've got this problem that needs to be fixed. So we've got no issues, but if you are having issues and it does come up with a code, you're gonna to wanna to do some things first before you start tearing stuff apart. So what you'll wanna do is hold down freezer and lighting. And what this will do is this will let you pick some custom commands. Uh, those commands can force the compressor to turn on, but we don't want that. What we want is RD means refrigerator defrost. FD means full defrost. It'll do both compartments. So for our purposes, we just want to do RD and you're going to want to let this run for about a half an hour before you go to tear anything down. This will force it to, uh, to defrost. But unfortunately, it probably won't do a perfect job. You might need to run it a couple times before you go opening anything or else you might crack stuff when you go to take it apart. I'm gonna disable this so that you don't have to listen to the beeping and then we'll take everything out and show you what we did. All right, so in a paragon of clarity, I'm gonna read this excerpt from the manual uh, to cancel test mode. During the simultaneous defrosting of fresh food in freezer compartments, if the display panel changed to the test mode and test button is pressed one more time, defrosting of fresh food or freezer compartments will be canceled and the unit will return to the normal operation or all test function will be canceled by turning main power on and off. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the main power on and off. All right, awesome. All right, let's begin the process. Uh, the super kiddos are gonna help me unpack the stuff in here. What is that? Elena, we have been looking for your Squishimal for hours. How did it get in there? I don't know. Ah, oh, what a weirdo. Chicken nuggets are for food. Okay. All right, There's well, your Squishy is very cold, so we'll put them over here. Now, the cool thing is about this, there's not much you need to disassemble interior-wise, but you have to get your stuff out of the way. there is a little tab that you need to press down right here, right over there. See a little tab right there. So we press this and we wiggle this forward and then this will come out. Wow. Why does that need a tab? Uh, the tab is just like a locking piece. <laughs> now there's no support on this, so don't rest your arms on here, but I need you to take out these screws and there's one under there. So, excuse me. What direction do we take out screws with? Uh, Counterclockwise? That's right. So if you could remove a couple and Lainey could remove a couple, that would be great. Uh, there's one at the top, but we have to remove this little decorative cover. without resting my arms. Can I rest my arms on here? Sure. Good. I'll take out two. Lainey can take out five. 
Um, no, there's there's a total of four. Sorry. Uh, wait, what about that one up there? Um, use your other hand to guide the tip in. Remember, hold one up there. Yep. Good job. Let's take those out and put them somewhere safe. I'm scared of drills. Well, it's not a drill, it's a driver, so that's fortunate. Ooh, it's magnetic. All right, we're gonna pop out this little decorative cover. With a plastic knife? Well, yeah, these are trim tools. So these are used to remove auto body panels without damaging them. So you can use a screwdriver or whatever, but just pop out this little cover and you'll see the concealed fastener. All right, Lainey, up here. Can you reach this high one? No. No? Okay, then you can do the bottom one. Yay. All right, come here, baby. Hold the drill with your right hand and guide the front with your left. I barely can reach it. I could do the bottom one if you want. All right, good job. Thank you. Did I get it out? You did. You did it. And then this bracket comes out. This grasshopper. I love the noise it makes. It's so like... satisfying. If you have a frozen condition, this is going to save you hundreds of dollars. This little steamer. It's, eh, it's okay for cleaning stuff, which is its intended purpose, but this is really useful if you need to defrost this ice compartment or here. So what you do is if you see ice encroaching on these little windows, these vents, you're going to fill up your steamer and you're going to direct steam into these ports um, with the refrigerator unplugged. And that's going to help you loosen up some of the ice that hopefully will prevent cracking of this panel. Same thing with this ice bin. If this ice bin is frozen up, I've seen people tear the front off of the actual ice bin trying to get it off. If you direct steam up into the outlet, it'll fill this with steam and it'll help melt that ice. So this, well, we'll have a link in the description. This is well worth the money spent. Also helpful for defrosting uh, your car if you get iced over, which is what we used it for recently. So you've diagnosed it with the trouble codes. You have forced defrost with the manual defrost function on the front panel. You have removed your stuff, you've removed the brackets, and you've injected steam if you're super frozen. So now we're gonna use a panel pooler. If you don't have one, um, you can just use a putty knife, but I think this plastic one will cause less damage. And we're gonna start at the bottom. There's uh, little arrows on the panel everywhere that there's like a retainer. So you wanna pry around those arrows if you can. Can I remember doing this? Yeah, taking apart a couch. Yes, we worked on disassembling a couch to put it into recycling. That's right. So here's a little crack. It's not the end of the world. That was from a previous attempt. So I had this thing for five years. Lowe's dropped our first refrigerator when they delivered it. So I'm like, hey, can you do something for me? And they gave me a five-year warranty. Samsung just threw parts at this thing or their authorized service center just threw parts at this thing for five years and it was such a pain. They never really fixed it. They just threw parts at it. So hopefully what you see behind here is going to be the permanent fix that they did not do. You'll need to disconnect these fasteners and to save money, they left you about zero inches of slack in the cable. So be very careful when you pull off the cover to not damage those. You'll have to just get enough room that you can get your hand in there, press the little retainers in, and then pop those out. So let's see if I can show you. The straight panel remover, which was in the set. All right, so there's the little tab that unlocks that claw. And then this one is on the left-hand side of the white connector, so you can see that. And now we can slowly remove this panel and get access. So half of the repair, you're gonna have to put your comments down and tell me what your results are because I tried a couple things at once and the combination solved the problem. I didn't do an actual experiment and figure out which of the fixes was responsible. So if you wanna try just one out of these multiple fixes, uh, let me know which is successful. So the first thing I did is I removed this unit right here and I put sealant behind the fan assembly because what happens is 
the ice um, accumulates where that loop is. And we'll take a close in shot. So I was concerned that there was getting moisture uh, where it didn't need to go. So I removed this assembly and I caulked it in place because it was not, um, it was not gasketed in any way. The second thing I did is when you remove this, it's going to cause some harm to this factory gasket, but I think the gasket wasn't working well everywhere in the first place. So I bought the thinnest possible, um, foam weather stripping that I could from the home despot. And it's challenging because the uh, adhesive isn't super aggressive on it. So what you need to do is put a little drop of CA glue, some super glue, um, every couple inches and set this down onto the existing foam. You could also tear off the existing foam and start from a substrate that is clean, but adding this foam should direct the air where it needs to go and keep moisture where it should not go. I also added some gasketing down there as well. No, it's foam. It's definitely foam. Yeah. This is the thinnest stuff you can get. So that's the changes that were made to the, um, I forget what they call this thing. Maybe the condensing coil cover. Um, I'll put down the proper part number for this in case you super destroy this thing. When the service people came, they didn't take the time or didn't have the time to defrost it. So they would just come in and just tear this thing off in pieces and destroy it and throw it away. But I don't think that's very smart. So take a look in here. So this is exactly what you want to see. This is a properly functioning coil. There should be a uniform layer of frost over everything, and there should not be a giant block of ice here. And I have some still images from when I fixed it before. When this thing freezes up, this entire thing gets turned into a block of ice. And as the ice creeps over into this region, this is where the fan sits. Uh, and that ice encroaches on the fan. Once the fan can no longer spin and circulate air, even though it's a frozen block of ice, you'll see that the temperature of your refrigerator is getting up to 40 or 50 degrees. And that's when you know that you're starting to have a problem. So symptom number one, the ice gets close to the blades while it's running. It goes ting, 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 ting. Strangely, this unit has a magnet switch up here and here. In fact, if you look down on the cover, I believe it says magnet. So in order to get the fan to run with the doors open, you have to override it by sticking two magnets on the door. Uh, because normally when you open up the door, that circulation fan stops. So to test it, you want to open the door, place two magnets here where these arrows are, and then you'll hear the, the clicking of the fan blade. If it gets too bad, as the ice continues to grow, it will actually stop the fan in its tracks and then there's no circulation taking place. So the second thing you need to do, uh, in addition to the changes that we made to the cover, is remove the factory weather stripping from around this penetration and there's none around these electrical connectors. And you're gonna use spray in a can, uh, polyurethane foam, to fill in the void. So step one, remove all the factory foam that is garbage. And step two, uh, insert some foam of your own, and this will prevent moisture from coming into the unit that's causing that ice to happen. So we foam this, we foam this, we foam this. And the last thing to do is, this is a sensor that reads the temperature of the coil. There's a table in the manual that lets you know at a given temperature what resistance value this should be. It's a thermistor. What's a um, resistance value? Resistance is how much a circuit wants to f stop current from flowing. So in a circuit that has little resistance, the current and the electricity flows very easily. When there is resistance, it's kind of like someone crimping a hose, it makes it harder for the electricity to flow. Mm -hmm. So resistance changes with temperature on this device. So I can put a multimeter on it, we've used those before, and we set it to ohms and we test the resistance. And you can actually test this part, make sure it's telling the computer the correct values. So if it's 67 degrees ambient temperature, you can look at a table inside this manual and see what the resistance value ought to be so that you know if this sensor is working correctly. If you confirm that this sensor is working correctly, the next thing to do is instead of it being located here, you should locate it here. And this will force the defrost circuit to run longer. Um, the only other thing you can check that oftentimes is not the problem, but it's something you should check while you have it apart. If you disconnect this blue connector here and this blue connector here, you will isolate the heating element. And you can also look in the manual and figure out what the default value should be for the heating element in the freezer compartment and in the refrigerator compartment. The poorly translated manual. In the poorly translated manual, thank you. So I've got some notes from when I took it. On my refrigerator, uh, the manual says it should be 137.7 ohms for that cooling element or for that heating element at room temperature. Um, and then it gives you a tolerance of what's acceptable, probably plus or minus 10% or plus or minus 5%. Um, you can isolate this from the circuitry of the computer by unplugging both of those blue connectors, put a meter across it and make sure that your uh, defrost element is not burned out. But as long as your temperature 
thermistor is reading the correct value. And as long as your defrost element is uh, the correct value as well, you know that those aren't the bad components. The bad components are moisture coming into here, the sensor being on the wrong part of the tubing, moving the sensor to here is what you want. You do not want it here. This will force it to run longer and making sure that you've sealed up all of the air intrusion that could happen on the panel. So as long as you do those things, you should have trouble-free operation. Uh, one more thing to check. There's a little piece of aluminum that's clamped on the heating element and that sits in this drain tray. So sometimes this drain can become occluded with gunk. So make sure while you have this open that you can clean this out and make sure that this is not clogged up with ice while you're doing your cleaning procedures. In theory, when this heats up, it should also heat up this aluminum tab, which reaches down into that hole and helps with the defrosting. But you wanna check that before you button everything up. But I can say from what I see here, we have a fix that has been successful for two months. So I think we created a permanent fix. If you'd be so kind, can you put some of your observations and comments down below in the video? Because I'd like to know if fixing only one of these things managed to solve your problem, or if you didn't have a fix, let me know and I'll figure out if I can find a way to give some suggestions to you. Uh, but long story short, you bought yourself a $2,000 or $3,000 refrigerator that has been bugging you for the last couple of years as I did. And I hope that this is an effective solution for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you'd be so kind, please like and subscribe because we love making videos for you and that'll help us on our way and you have a great day. Bye.